Today is the Feast of St. Joseph the Worker, apart from the Feast of St. Joseph that we have in March generally. But the Feast of St. Joseph the Worker is, is a beautiful, significant day for us as well to kind of put our lives in, in perspective as well and why we do what we do. We know St. Joseph to be the carpenter and his life wasn't, wasn't a bed of roses, a man who didn't speak much. Well, they say generally people after marriage don't speak much or the men after marriage don't speak much. But a person with so much of graceful silence, real graceful silence, his silence that had, that bore a lot of fruit and to read the person that St. Joseph was, you have to read through his, his little actions. Nothing was easy for St. Joseph. Obviously a person who would have had a lot of dreams about what kind of a family he would want and how his, his generations and his lineage, as any typical Israelite Jew would, would expect, how his lineage is going to pan out as well. But nothing seemed to go according, according to plan for St. Joseph. He got a family where he knew the child that he was raising up was not his own. Where he had a wonderful woman become a part of his life only to tell him that the child is not his, is born of the Holy Spirit. It's, it's, not, it's not perfect situations to find yourself in. And then with, with this turmoil in his house, he then has, he turns into a refugee along with his family, having to leave his own home, to go from place to place and not, not being able to settle anywhere. And then having to settle all over in a new place and start his work of being a carpenter all over again. Sometimes when he is a refugee, wouldn't have been able to even build up his, his business of being a carpenter. You know, there's, there's barely any stability in the, in the life of St. Joseph and, and the difficulties that he went through, especially after, after the Annunciation. And yet, St. Joseph seems this person with so much of calm and so much of grace. And somewhere deep within, we would understand, even as, as Joseph went about doing what he did, and though he had to work, and he had to provide, he had to work and as a carpenter because he needed to provide for his family, somewhere we understand that St. Joseph was focused that his work wasn't an end in itself. His work was a means to provide for his family. And that's, that's very essential for us to understand as well. Today, we, we don't live in perfect environments. We, we, we struggle with the burdens that we have as well. Far more for you in family life when you have to provide for your families. When it's when it's difficult, your family situation need not be good. The situation with your spouse need not be good. The situation with your child need not be good, just as it was for, for St. Joseph. Not a perfect home environment. And maybe that's exactly what you're going through. Not a perfect home environment. Maybe it's, it's a situation where you cannot settle because you're moving from place to place trying to kind of find roots somewhere. Things might not be perfect and to add to it, the job situations you find yourself in, the burdens of your job, in the midst of all this, on days like this, when we remember Labor Day and we remember all the workers and we pray and we, we find St. Joseph to be an intercessor on this day for us, still it's good to kind of keep focus as to what our work is supposed to do for us. It's meant to be a means towards an end. 
which is our family and the blessedness of our family. Our work is meant to help sustain our family. Our work is not an end in itself. Sadly, today we live in a world where our work ends up an end in itself. I'm connection to my studies. I'm, I'm reading a bit about uh, the Carthusian way of life and, and the monastic way of life. And at those times when they would have these, these lands that they would till and they would work on it themselves, the, the monastics and, and, uh, and, and the priests would work in those fields. In all their writings and in all their rules, it's very clearly stated, do not forget that the work is not an end in itself, but it is a means to you growing in prayer. So that's, that, that has a purpose. And do not forget that it is only a purpose. And that, that purpose is moving towards an end, your growth in prayer. And that's the same for us with our work. Our work is not an end in itself. And we have to be very careful in a fast-paced world where we are, where everything's a competition. And climbing the ladder of success and gaining the heights of success to be called a success story can be a craving of the human heart, but maybe that craving comes from a faulty foundation. And we have to remember and remind ourselves that the work we do is a means towards an end. The work I do is to provide for my family to put food on the table, and that is why I work. It's supposed to help, help me grow as a human person, help me grow in the image and likeness of God to help me become a better human being. It has to be a means towards an end, not an end in itself. And if our work is becoming an end in itself, it is becoming a final destination and everything that I do is all about my work. In some way I've gone wrong and I've put work on a pedestal it is not supposed to be in. Very often we don't find time for family. We don't, time find, we don't find time for marriage. And nowadays work is not becoming a source of blessing for the marriage, a source of blessing for the family. Rather, work is now becoming a hindrance for marriage, a hindrance for family, a hindrance for family time. Suddenly, work has now been put on a different pedestal. It's become an end in itself. With the lockdown, there are people who are saying, earlier we... We thought because we were going to work, I couldn't find time with my family. Now with the lockdown, many are working from home and having the family in the house. And yet, there's no time for the family. The work has now become an end in itself. True, we will always find the excuse that that is how it is today. Well, that comes somewhere from a, from a greed to have things that everyone else has. Now, it is all about providing for things, for material things. And the emotion is, is now sidelined. Spirituality is sidelined. Relationships are sidelined. Now it's more about what I have. I'm no longer happy with, with a car I drove four years ago. Now I need to get something better. I'm no longer happy with the gadget I have. I need to get something better. I no longer am telling my child to be happy with what they have. Rather, I feel that my child needs something better. And this whole craving of, of human beings towards getting something better or getting something more is making work become an end in itself. Rather, it becoming a means of grace. For St. Joseph, we don't hear much about how St. Joseph worked, but we know that he brought up a beautiful family. Maybe that's how we need to place work as well. Don't place it on a pedestal, which it is not meant to be on, but let it become 
a means towards our growth, our spiritual growth, our emotional growth, our relationships growth. That's important, but that is when we know how to focus the work God has blessed us with. Let's close our eyes for a moment. Let us thank the Lord for having given us the ability to work, the talent to work, the intellectual capabilities to handle our work. Lord, you have provided us with physical strength, with great gifts and talents. We use this at our workplaces. But Lord, let our work never become an end in itself. Let it become a means for our growth in you, in our relationships. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.